meeting. Uh, resolution regarding the Second and Tenth Amendment rights uh, from Commissioner Goodrow. Um, I did I'm gonna take the liberty of asking our county attorney, uh, you have looked at this, Ms. Uh, just to give us your impression on it, because I haven't heard that, and uh, I'd like to, uh, hear, since we employ you for our legal uh, advice, I'd like to hear what you might have to say on it. Well, I mean, this is kind of an unusual role for me, because normally I'm telling you if what you're trying to do is legal or not, yes, you could pass this, and there's nothing really illegal about it. Um, there's a few things that jump out at me um, that I'd like to comment on. Um, first, this is basically addressed to the General Assembly and the state and county people. It really doesn't address anybody in Congress in Washington. And I think that it might be an appropriate step to have it addressed to our representatives in Washington where those type issues are actually being um, argued and discussed. I'm not sure what power the General Assembly has to do what you're asking the General Assembly to do. Um, states don't have the power to bring in federal legislation. And therefore, it may be more effective if it were addressed to the federal legislators who will be legislating rather than the state, the General Assembly. Um, even if they pass what you're asking them to pass, federal legislation will trump it. So, why not start at the source and go to the feds and ask them to do what you're asking to be done? Um, one of the things I would like to comment, Carol Black did a letter to the editor in the Allegheny News this past week, and she was concerned about the phrase, are God-given rights as Americans to keep and bear arms? And she basically asked the question, where in the Bible does it state that um, individuals have God-given rights to bear arms? So apparently there are members of the public who are concerned about that phrase. Um, in the section concerning be resolved, county manager be directed to see that no county paid staff under the direct control or report of the county manager and or the Allegheny County Board of Commissioners participate in nor allow any county resources be used in the implementation of any federal law. What employees do the drafters of this document believe have those functions now? Just a question. If we're, if we're excluding the Sheriff's Department, who else would be in a position to implement those? I mean, I was just going through the list of county employees, and I'm not really sure that there are any who would have any direct county function dealing with the implementation of those. So, yeah. again, I don't think it hurts anything, but I think it doesn't do anything at all. Um, Again, in the next paragraph, um, we're calling upon the General Assembly to let's see, strengthen the Second and Tenth Amendments as applicable against federal infringement of the enabled right of people to keep and bear arms. Again, I'm not sure what power the General Assembly has to do that. Um, I just recall something happening in history several years ago in South Carolina kind of told the federal government what to do with disastrous results. And then the final, uh, next to the last, Paragraph, be it further resolved that the General Assembly adopt a proposed amendment to the North Carolina Constitution to be submitted to the voters to change Article 1, Section 30 to guarantee the rights of a law abiding citizen to carry unimpeded a concealed weapon in any place that a duly sworn force, a law enforcement officer may carry a weapon. Uh, I just have a question about what was intended with that, with that statement. I mean, I, I think that it's perfectly legal for this board to ask the General Assembly to do that, but I think as a practical matter, what this language is saying is that anyone can, who has a concealed weapon permit would be allowed to carry a concealed weapon in courtrooms, schools, hospitals, any business or bank, even if they have the sticker on the, the door saying they don't want people to enter with concealed weapons. And I don't know that that was the intention that the drafter had, but I don't know that it wasn't. And that's just something I think that would probably need to be answered. That's just kind of my... My, my questions as I read through the document. Okay, well, thank you. Um, well, last time we put a motion on the floor and we didn't get a second, um, so I'm going to ask for uh, Commissioner Goodrow if you want to make a motion. Well, first of all, it looks like you want to dictate basically what I was supposed to do here. Uh, 
actually, if you look at this and you look under it, it says commissioner business that I asked and a an, uh, piece of information be put on the agenda, and obviously it looks like uh, I wasn't allowed to do that by the direction of the chairman and maybe the county attorney and the board, but you know, I'm under the impression that I was elected by the people of Allegheny County to be their voice and represent everybody in Allegheny County, and I, under our rules and procedures, uh, I followed our procedures, I put this agenda on the, or I put this topic on the agenda to be considered, and apparently uh, I want to be stifled, and that's what our, our, um, the board's trying to uh, stifle me and, uh, you know, that right and our rights under the First Amendment, freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Um, you know, I just wanted to point that out. Now, if it pleasures the board, I would like to follow my original intent and go through this, and I'll be happy to answer some of the things that our county attorney pointed out. If you'll allow me that privilege, sir. And it's, there's certainly no attempt to stifle. I just wanted to, last time we talked it all up, up before we asked him, had, had the item on the agenda, I'm not item on the agenda, but had the vote, and I was trying to get to the vote and get to a second, and so we could discuss it. Well, if you're happy with it, we can go right to the vote, but uh, I don't think we need to go that route yet. Part of the reason uh, for putting it on the agenda is one of the things that was on there is one of the commissioners made a comment in the past that he didn't have time to look at it, or throw it. so this obviously gave everybody the time to look at it. The proposal has been amended slightly, and I will cover that. Uh, first of all, maybe I'll uh, address some of the concerns. Uh, I think there was a concern earlier that uh, automobiles were not, uh, you know, regulated. And certainly, if you want to take that concern and look at it, um, yes, people have the right to drive and operate an automobile, and yes, that is their constitution right, their constitutional right. That wasn't available when uh, our founding fathers developed this country. But one key point on there that they missed is there's also a thing called driver's education where we educate people how to drive and operate the vehicle safely. So that, you know, I think that's a, uh, not a very good argument there. Extreme background checks. You can get into Amendment 6. And I'll read some of these for you in case some people don't know some of our amendments. The right of the people to be secure in their or, Secure in their person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. That's an extreme background check, folks. That's what is protected under the Sixth Amendment. You could stretch it, maybe you get onto the Eighth Amendment when it talks about cruel and unusual forms of punishment. as also an extreme background check. Another point that came up is, well, maybe Allegheny County government shouldn't be deciding this. And I would ask why. Why should we not be discussing this? This is a very important topic. These are your rights. And yes, they're God-given rights, and I will discuss that, and I will answer Ms. Black's point in the paper. But everybody in Allegheny County has those rights, as in the state and as in this country. And when it's important to them and when they feel their rights are being infringed upon, it is a matter for this board to decide. And it's a matter for all elected leaders to stand up because we did take an oath to uphold and defend not only the Constitution of the United States, but the Constitution of the state of North Carolina. And so did our president. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read the oath that our president took. And then you tell me, I get my glasses on here, and get to it. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And to the best of my ability, preserve, and the key word I'm going to emphasize it is preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. It does not say I will change the Constitution of the United States. It says preserve. And I think you all know we beat it to death 
the Second Amendment in here. And if you start with our First Amendment, where it says Constitu or Congress shall make no laws that violate with these rights. Those are real key points. Preserve no laws infringing upon it. That means none, folks, the way I read it. And I think the way most people read that. And with a president that is trying to change that, he's not trying to preserve the Constitution, he's trying to change the Constitution. That's where it becomes, yes, everyone in here can write their legislator, and yes, you can write, you know, Congress. And at any time, we can amend this, and we can add this. We can send this to Virginia Fox. We can send this to Richard Burr. And I'll be happy to do that. I'll be happy to put it on there. But a lot of this amendment also addressed the state constitution. And that's what I'll go to now since, you know, it was brought up that, you know, God-given rights. And well, before I do that, we'll get into it. I've, and there's a lot of debate that goes on, really, our father, our founding fathers' intent and... Uh, you know, you can read a lot of things, look into the Federalist Papers, and uh, uh, but when you read it, they were God-fearing Christian men that had the basis, you know, of their Christianity, and it, it, it's evident all through the Constitution. It's there. You know, when they talk about being endowed by their Creator, I don't think that's their mother and father. Well, it was, but before their mother and father were created, maybe it's their grandparents. But eventually, where does it get back to? Their creator is God. And it's pretty clear. And if you go when they ratified it, and they, you know, you can argue, well, maybe not. But then if you go down, you get down to the end where they ratified it. They said, in the X day of our Lord. Well, who was their Lord? The king of England? No. We know who their Lord was. But to the point, really, on God-given rights, if you get into the Constitution of the state of North Carolina, I'll start with the preamble. And I'll read it for everyone. We, the people of the state of North Carolina, grateful to Almighty God, the sovereign ruler of nations, for the preservation of the American Union and the existence of our civil, political, and religious liberties, and acknowledge our dependence upon him for the continuance of those blessings to us and to our posterity, do for the more certain security thereof and for the better government of this state and ordain and establish this Constitution. And then it goes on to when you get into Section 1, the quality and rights of persons. We hold it to be self-evident that all people are created equal, and they are endowed by their Creator for certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, the enjoyment of the fruits of their own labor, and the pursuit of their happiness. In the resolution, it talks about the rights under the state of North Carolina, too. Those are your God-given rights. It's in there. I mean, anyone that sits here in this office, in this position, that argues against it, is going against their oath. It's there. You took the oath to that when you walked into here and stood in that courtroom. I think we all stood in that courtroom over there on Main Street and bowed an oath there. I'll just go, if I may, go to the changes I made. And it was really at the request of, you know, one of our commissioners to spell out a little further because they said, well, we didn't think that the county manager had the right to tell the sheriff what to do. No, he doesn't. Under the state of North Carolina, they don't. So I really didn't even have to put that in there, but I wanted to explain it a little more. So I explained <coughs> it in there. But there are other departments in here that could fall under the, uh, the well, that do fall under the direction of the county manager and this board. Emergency management would be the most glaring obvious one. Maybe even into, you know, well, animal control could be one. They have policing powers. There is powers there. I don't think you could 
get into it with. That would be two very obvious, glaring examples. And I will tell you, and for everyone sitting here, I'm willing to amend this and change this to however you see fit. I mean, I'm, I'm not wanting this to be one way. But it is important to the people of Allegheny County. The vast majority. Yes, we had three people talk against it. Three that I have heard from. And an over number of them on the other side voicing their opinion in support. And unfortunately, no, not everybody can get here. I understand that. And I understand sitting in this position, not everyone's going to agree with me. And that's your right. And it's your right to tell me and talk to me. And by God, if I don't do the right job, then, you know, come election time, if I run again, vote me out and get somebody else in here. I mean, that's what I expect you to do. This is your county. Take charge of your county. And that's what I'm asking, you know, you to do. Um, I wanted to really, when this started, enter into a discussion about it, but apparently it, you know, went more of a, Dictation on law? No, I'm not a, an attorney. I don't even play an attorney spokesman. Oh, that was a joke, but anyway. Um, is there questions? I'd be happy to. Did I cover most of your questions or There's point? one in particular that you did not. And just for clarification, I'm responding to requests from another commissioner. I'm not here to attack no, no, anything you say. I understand I, and respect your First Amendment rights um, to speak, as well as anyone else who comes into this room. Um, and I think that from a personal standpoint, I certainly uh, respect the Second Amendment. My husband has a federal firearms license and a gun shop. I mean, it would be ridiculous for me to say I'm against the Second Amendment. However, you know, my, my, the request that came to me was, what do I see about this document that I have question about? And, and one thing you have really not addressed... My original point wasn't directed at you. Obviously, you've been asked to do what you did. And, and that, I'm, that I'm trying to make point. that clear. Yeah. But that's what I'm doing in my capacity. I was asked to do a job. I'm trying to do that job. Thank you. Um, the other question that I did have was the portion concerning the amendment to the North Carolina Constitution to allow lost abiding citizens to carry unimpeded a concealed weapon in any place that a duly sworn law enforcement officer may carry a weapon. Was it your intention to allow that to cover courtrooms, schools, hospitals, churches? That would cover all areas. But the way it was written, but again, the key point, what I said, is I'm willing to amend it. What, and, you know, jump in. Please discuss it. What would you like to see there? What would you like to see? I'm not a commissioner, but I'm, I'm not. No, I'm, but I, I look this way when I, if I, if I look chair, this way. If the chair would allow me to ask the question. Sorry. Um, what was the intention behind the statement? Why would it be important to carry concealed weapons in those places? Right now, conceal and carry gun owners are restricted in certain areas. Yes. Well, they have the ability in public parks now as long as the governing body allowed it. No, they don't have courtrooms. They don't have schools or government buildings. This is one. This is one. Or if there's any, you know, logo on the door. And if you notice, most places when that was first passed, grocery stores had that logo on their store and it's gone now. I wonder why. So you understand really how a lot of businesses feel. One thing though about a conceal and carry weapons permit person, which I have a, a permit, and you do go through an extreme background, okay? I mean, and, and some may argue that if I'm mentally stable up here, but obviously they thought so. Um, so, I think, why is there, if, if you can go through that and basically you've passed the same background check that a law enforcement officer did, why can you not carry it on that? And again, if you want to change it, change that statement. Please do. You know, I didn't, I didn't think I was coming here to be on trial today. But, I mean, that, that's fine. If that's the direction we want to go, so be it. Then we probably need to get a Bible up here where I can put my hand on it and, you know, swear that I'm going to tell the truth and the whole truth, so help me God. And God is allowed in our government. Okay. 
So I'm willing, I'm willing and I'm open. I'd be happy to make a motion on it now, but obviously by the direction it's going, I, I'm sure I won't get a second, but I would like to make a motion that we adopt this resolution as written. Okay. Commissioner Goudreau has put a motion on the floor that we adopt this resolution as read. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion dies for a lack of a second. And I do want to, if I may, sure. just thank you for your time and your consideration. And Madam Attorney, no, I mean, no, I mean there was nothing directed at you personally. Well, Mr. Lutz, I was ordered a second amendment, but uh, what happened on the day we received I received this about an hour before the last meeting we had. So I figured I had to have a little time to read it over, look it over before I voted on it anyway. But I, I had a couple of disagreements on it. After I read it, after I got home that night, and a couple of them was what uh, Don and I are read out a while ago. But that's why I didn't, I didn't receive it until I walked in here and it lay in there. But my email didn't work. And thank you. And, and one thing, if I may, just one more real quick comment, if I can. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out this didn't uh, stand in the way of county business. If you notice, it was conducted at the end of the meeting. We went through a full agenda. We approved anything, and under our rules of uh, procedure, at any time, any commissioner can put a, uh, uh, you know, an item on that. And, I, and any item that's on there, I'll sit as long here as I have to, to go through anything, whether I agree with it or not. That's why I'm here. Thank you. I agree with it. And uh, I think uh, I think I know everybody sitting here probably are gun owners. I don't speak for anybody else, but I've owned the gun the guns since I was a kid, and I need to still do and uh, support the Second Amendment. I don't support changes in it, but I support the Second Amendment. And so, anybody else got anything to say? Well, if if this is coming time, I it is. Yeah. Uh, just to Mr. Smith that, that did make the comment that uh, that I was somewhat confused, and I am, and still am. I, I left the house this morning, I read an article, and it was, I think it was on the talk shows yesterday when Senator McCain was on. And, and Senator McCain, I would assume, has taken an oath numerous times to uphold the Constitution of the United sure, yeah. States. There was military service and re-elected to the Senate. And, and this article left me with it. He said that right now in the Senate that they are some debating, a bipartisan debate that's going on concerning some of the, the background checks. Now, and, and what got my attention, and, he, and this is a quotation, he says, and I applaud these efforts. Now, I'm, I'm going on some of this and, and, and I am not comfortable nor am I prepared to, to, to sign a document that would, would preemptively nullify anything that, that comes from something that's not even decided yet, that's still being debated. And I suspect this debate is going to be going on for quite a while. But that's my comment. Anyone else? Commissioner Lees? I think the main thing I heard Attorney Shoemate say is that federal law trumps state law. No, no, no. 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 Correct. One, one cannot preempt federal law. Cannot preempt. And therefore, I see lots of holes in this. And I don't understand why we're using our energy on this kind of a document when we have such problems in this county that the main 
solution would be economic development and a process to create jobs for our constituents. I think that is the most important goal we should have on our docket these days. And if we're not, we're not doing our job. Period. That's all I have to say because people twist my words. Anyone else? Well, now, now, and I'll just point out that we talked about economic development right before I presented my resolution. And yes, that is very important, and I agree with you, Commissioner Lees, and that with, that is very important. There's a lot of people suffering in this county, and we need to get to that point. And I'm happy to spend all the time, you know, I can, put all my efforts, you know, in that arena to do whatever I can. I mean, it, it, it bugs me to shape this county, Sam. Anything else? All right. Uh, if not, then I do entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any second? Anyway, the county attorney is wrong. All in favor? By the way. All in favor of adjournment? All right. Aye. Aye.